Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Kyle. I'm the Communications Manager for ImageSource. We're really excited to have you on the line for this webinar. We've planned out some great content and lined up some really knowledgeable individuals, so let's get right to it. First and foremost, welcome. If you haven't already done so, please mute your phones so we can eliminate any background noise. Our goal for the hour is to show you how enterprise content management can be used to solve common problems across city, county, and state organizations, and how it can easily lead to a truly paperless government. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the term enterprise content management, we will give several examples of what it is and what it can do for your organization using various use cases. And if you like what you see today, there will be plenty more to see in the near future. We'll be hosting a number of free webinars this year with great educational content, and we'll be sure to send you an update of our schedule after the session today. Just a quick look at the agenda. First, I'll introduce my colleagues who have joined us today to share their expertise and answer your questions. Then we'll go through some use cases to see how enterprise content management, which is also known as ECM, can solve common issues we see in government all the time. In the last half, we'll see an overview of an ECM technology called iLinks Content Store to show you how our solutions can bring something very unique to the table. Then we'll give you a brief introduction to Image Source and what we do for both government organizations and private companies. Now, this is really important. We want this to be as interactive as possible, so be sure to use the chat function at the, uh, on your screen to send in any questions you have. We'll be leaving some time at the end to address the questions. Before we get into the use cases, I want to introduce our experts joining us today. First, we have Christina Parma. Hi, Christina. Thank you for coming. Hi. Thanks, Kyle. Christina is an account executive specializing in government ECM solutions, and I've asked her to join me today because when it comes to solving business problems in government, she's really seen it all, and she'll be helping answer questions at the end of the presentation. Also on the line with us today is our VP of Strategic Emerging Markets, John Smetana. Hi there, John. Hi, uh, good afternoon, Kyle. How are you? Doing very well, thanks. Uh, John's been in the industry for quite some time, and his experience in ECM is invaluable. Uh, luckily, John's had some time to get on the line and share his experiences with iLink's content store. But before we dive into the technology, let's go through some use cases to see what ECM is all about. Now, the cases I'm about to share with you are rough adaptations of our own experiences with customers, and we think they're a great starting point for common problems seen in city, county, and state government. Our first use case is that of public disclosure, and in this particular case, the constituent requests the plans and permits for an older home in the city. We call it from the ground up. So here's the story. This is Debbie. Debbie works in the Department of Housing and Urban Development for the city of Arlington. Now, Debbie has been working there for 10 years. She knows the field and legal processes surrounding it like the back of her hand. And despite the mess of paper documents you see around her, she's well organized and a great multitasker. One day, Debbie receives a building permit plans request from a constituent asking her to disclose all the permit and building information regarding a 100-year-old home somewhere in the city. In case you're not familiar with this process, that's a lot of documents. And as I said before, Debbie knows the law well, and under public disclosure laws, she's required to comply with such a request in a timely fashion. Debbie will have to dig up century-old building permits, drawings, blueprints, financial information, and more. Worse yet, if the home was ever remodeled, which is likely given its age, she'll have to dig up those documents for, again for a different era, which could be decades ago. A lot of these documents are gigantic sheets of paper, too, making them extremely hard to organize, properly redact for security, and deliver. So she has the request. Now what? Well, it's time to start gathering the necessary documents. Luckily, there are many documents she can retrieve electronically from her workstation. Some of the documents are paper, and some can be found internally in filing cabinets, and some in a secure off-site storage archive, which she must visit to access. Documents relating to utility information have been saved by a different city department, so she has to reach out to them to get the information. It seems pretty straightforward, right? But as Debbie goes along, she begins to run into some issues. Her internal file system where some of the documents are stored has been tampered with, not maliciously, of course. You see, over time, employees have been labeling things incorrectly, adding unnecessary folders, not following naming conventions, you know, things we see all the time. Essentially, the file tree went from extremely organized to a complete mess. Debbie tries using the search feature rather than clicking through the folders, but she quickly realizes she's grasping at straws. But she can't let it slow her down. The public disclosure request is time sensitive. So Debbie steps away from her workstation and starts digging around some filing cabinets, pulling documents, only to find that there are a few files missing. 
Well, it couldn't have been Debbie. She's well organized. But at this point, fault doesn't matter. Her only concern is getting it resolved. And if you thought that retrieving documents from another department was going to mean a simple one-off email, think again. Despite several attempts, Debbie's unable to get a response from the records manager at the utility company. For legal purposes, she must provide full disclosure in a timely fashion, and fulfilling that requirement is becoming less and less realistic. So what does she do in this situation? Well, obviously time is of the essence, and the point, and at this point there's not much she can do. Uh, she either has to wait for the documents to turn up, causing her to miss the deadline for the request, or she doesn't provide full disclosure. Both spell bad news for Debbie and her department. Now, this situation might seem a little exaggerated, but to be honest, we see it happen all the time. But it's important here that you don't blame the people, you blame the process. You can change the behavior of people all you want, but if you don't change the process, mistakes will inevitably be made, sometimes costly ones. This is where enterprise content management comes in. If Debbie's department made use of a common content repository, which is a critical part of an ECM system, all of this data could have been stored electronically and found easily with proper indexing controls in place, of course. The data would also be more secure. Debbie could set permissions for who could access and edit the electronic folders and their content, so only she and a few others could make changes. By putting ECM in place between departments, interdepartmental collaboration on content would also be vastly improved, meaning Debbie does not have to wait three weeks to get a phone call returned just to get a document. The list of process improvements can go on and on, but the benefits I want to highlight here are that Debbie is able to improve customer service, eliminate the cost associated with paper processes, and improve her own satisfaction as an employee by allowing her to perform her own tasks more effectively. Her critical content would be available when she needs it, easily searchable, and ready to deliver. That means full and proper disclosure every time. And another step towards a paperless government. But you don't have to be a part of any public disclosure process for this type of solution to make a difference. Any department that needs to restore and retrieve documents could find ECM quite valuable. For example, if you work in an accounts payable department and are subject to audits, you might find this useful. Or if you work in public works and you need a secure place to store CAD drawings and other plans, I, I could keep throwing out examples and try and, but, but I want you to try and think about your department or other departments you work closely with and all the paper and manual transactions that are involved. I, I think you'll find that a similar solution could really do a great amount of good. All right, on to our next case uh, surrounding forms processing, which we've titled Drowning in Documents. This is Greg. Greg is one of the 160 adjudicators working in the Unemployment Benefits Office for his entire state. His job is both extremely important and extremely time-consuming. Between the 160 adjudicators, his department handles more than 50,000 unemployment benefits applications each month, and unfortunately in recent years that number had been growing. So let's go through the unemployment benefits request process. When a constituent submits an application for benefits, he or she sends in either a paper or electronic form, and it lands in one of two processing centers. The applications are then sorted and routed to adjudicators based on the last four digits of the applicant's social security number, with exceptions made, of course, for language barriers and other details requiring specific attention. And keep in mind, this process involving document sorting and routing is entirely manual. Can you guess what happens in the system? You see, in some cases, Greg would be working 30 cases while Julia, in the cubicle across from him, works only five cases. Julia got lucky because the social security numbers in the most recent batch of cases just so happened to not be within her range. To make matters even worse, it's virtually impossible to track an application through the process. If an applicant calls to check on the status of an application, it could quite literally be buried under a stack of papers at Greg's desk, and the department won't be able to, ha uh, to offer up a timeline or even a simple update for that matter. Uh, worse yet, departmental managers have very little oversight in the process. Uh, they can't track bottlenecks in forms processing or even identify top performers. Now, let's not mince words here. These applicants need decisions made quickly. If Greg's caseload is too high and Julia's is too low, then the office isn't working anywhere near maximum efficiency. This means delays in decisions that are extremely time sensitive and affect the applicants in a big way. So here's a list of some of the problems we outlined in the system, uh, but what's the crux of the issue here? 
Well, some people might suggest that the office is understaffed and hiring more people to balance the caseload would fix most of these issues. Uh, that may be true, but what happens when the caseload grows even bigger? Do we keep increasing staff and expanding budgets? As yeah, something tells me in our current economic state, that's just not going to happen. Just like with Debbie and her public disclosure problem, it's not about the people in the situation, it's the process. Adding labor hours is only a stopgap until things escalate again. So the unemployment office needs a better solution through enterprise content management. The important thing to keep in mind is that ECM focuses on long-term viability through a number of process improvements. The first thing ECM could bring to the table is forms recognition. Whether the form came in from an electronic source or was scanned into the system, it doesn't matter. Forms recognition technology can automatically pull relevant information, in, in this case, a uh, social security number, off of the form for processing. Uh, the next step would be automated workflow, which would take a social security number pulled off of a form and use it to select an adjudicator, especially if there's a unique case such as a language barrier like we talked about earlier. We'll see faster processing times as forms are routed through these rules-based workflows, paving the way for more efficient operations with vastly lower costs. Constituents who call in for an update can get an exact play-by-play -play of the progress from the distribution center. And for the managers out there, ECM takes away the barriers to finding the top forms processors and identifying bottlenecks. So these process improvements sound pretty good, but what I really want to emphasize in this particular case are the goals the department achieves through ECM. They've achieved greater throughput of applications without adding staff. They're able to easily access and track applications mid-process. They've eliminated costs associated with manual or paper-based processes. They have improved both customer and employee satisfaction. And, not to be overlooked, they've laid the groundwork for the possibility of future self-service for constituents, which can be an enormous resource saver, especially for this department. And all of this stems from pro proper caseload management thanks to ECM. But let's not limit the scope to Greg's situation. Uh, this same solution can be found solving problems in many departments. For instance, license forms processing, such as business or driver's licenses. This type of forms processing could quite easily fit under this model. Uh, this solution is also commonly used in employee onboarding when a new hire is filling out a number of both electronic and paper forms that need to be ingested and tracked. Uh, the truth is that this solution has broad implications for both the public and private sector, and that's why business and government departments are adopting this technology so quickly. It's just a really huge efficiency gain. All right, the last case, the case study we're going to go through is something that most of us can relate to, unfortunately. We call it the traffic stop. Now, the problems in this case are similar to that of the first use case, but I wanted to show you how widely applicable these ECM solutions are. As you can see, our motorist Chris is not having a good day. Officer Torres clocked him going 10 miles and over, over the speed limit, but Chris is convinced that this simply isn't true. So obviously Chris feels wronged in this situation and he decides to contest the ticket. He fills out the necessary paperwork and after an approval process, the judge grants him a court date. When an officer is taken to a court by a traffic offender, it isn't a simple process of each side telling a story and then the judge using the hearsay to come to a decision. Like all other legal processes, it takes a lot of time and a lot of evidence. Now, each state has its own requirements, but if an officer is unable to produce a required document for a traffic violation hearing, the case will be thrown out. That means the officer's time and taxpayer dollars are wasted. We've spoken with so many officers who've seen obvious offenders get away because of some miscellaneous document that couldn't be recovered, and it's really frustrating for them. Uh, but back to our story. There are many documents that need to be pulled several times during the contesting process. The police report is arguably the most important, and if uh, Officer Torres somehow stores it incorrectly, the case will be tossed without further discussion. Chris will likely demand to see the radar calibration report to make sure that it's current too. Again, if Officer Torres can't come up with it, Chris gets away with the crime. If Chris or his lawyer want to get even trickier, they might request what's called a speed survey record for the stretch of road on which the offense happened. This could be years old, and if Officer Torres is unable to locate it, it becomes another dead end. Another obvious one is Chris's driving record. The officer will want to pull this report several times during the process. Uh, this probably wouldn't get a case thrown out if it were somehow missing, but it's still very important to litigation. And even though this is a simple traffic stop, Officer Torres may have taken a few photos or maybe recorded some audio for good measure. Uh, if Chris presents his own set of media for defense, Officer Torres needs to have his images and audio ready and accessible. 
I think you get the picture. The list goes on and on. And if Officer Torres is unable to produce any of the required documents in question, which varies depending on the state, the case will be dismissed. And a lot of time and taxpayer money will have been wasted. Some of these docu documents are electronic and some of them are physical in nature. Uh, some get scanned into various systems. We start to run into the same problems we found with Debbie, where content retrieval becomes cumbersome or maybe even impossible. And in this case, consequences become society's problem. If Chris can catch the officer without one of these, do of these documents, essentially, he goes scot-free. So how can ECM be applied to this case? Well, the most obvious application is, again, the Universal Content Repository. If Officer Torres needs a five-year-old document that's tied loosely to the case, he wouldn't have to dig through endless libraries of file folders in some off-site location. He could access them right from his workstation. This also becomes important if Chris gets pulled over again for the same citation, as the content will be easily referenced. The repository would provide better security for the documents with customizable document ownership controls, and it would also be indexed to provide maximum searchability. Again, I could keep talking about the process improvements all day, but the main goals that we have achieved here are the ability to easily and immediately access important documents, even from long-term storage, and we've improved employee satisfaction, again, by enabling the officer to perform at his best, which all leads to a better day in court for the officer, which is always good. But we also want you to consider the simplicity of this scenario. Uh, if, it's, if a simple traffic stop for a speeding violation can get this complicated, think about what happens in an escaped convict's case where information is cr spread across uh, cities, counties, maybe even states. Or think about a simple fender bender and all the pictures, uh, the audio, insurance claims, police reports, mechanic reports, all the documents that come along with it. It becomes a logistical nightmare very quickly, and ECM exists to make these processes easier for the people handling the paperwork. So hopefully this paints a good general picture of what ECM can do from a city, county, or state level. Uh, in the interest of time, I left out a lot, but the truth is there are so many ECM technologies on the market, and they all bring unique attributes and process improvements to the table. I brought in my colleague John to talk about a technology we're very excited about at ImageSource. It's called iLinks Content Store, and it's a crucial piece to a complete ECM solution that can quite easily solve the problems we found in the cases from earlier. Uh, in the interest of time, ladies and gentlemen, I give you our iLinks guru, Mr. John Santana. Thanks, Kyle, for the introduction, and uh, those are some really good examples that you, uh, that you provided for us. Uh, what I'm going to cover today is really three main things, the features, functions, and use cases of Island's content store, really trying to draw out what it's capable of doing, as well as um, how it is uh, unique or maybe different from other uh, content management uh, systems. If you take a look at really where Island's Content Store fits, its capabilities are, are kind of between um, two circles, if you will. Uh, on the left, I've, uh, I've got a blue uh, sphere or circle that represents traditional uh, legacy ECM uh, systems. And again, for clarity, ECM stands for Enterprise Content Management. Um, and then on the right-hand side, what I have are features and functionality that Island's has in common with uh, SaaS or cloud ECM systems. So in essence, the way to look at Island's Content Store is it's a web-based application that fits really well with companies and organizations and government agencies who desire to deploy web-based applications in their own private cloud. In a nutshell, you get uh, with Island's Content Store, you get the best of both worlds. To look at Content Store and, and really what, it, what is its base functionality, it was really born out of the idea that many companies and government agencies and organizations may not really need a lot of uh, advanced features and functionality. In other words, they simply need to scan and file paper and digital documents, securely store them, and then retrieve them either from within or outside of the office. So to, be, to, to kind of uh, pinpoint, you know, how am I to get uh, paper documents into the system, uh, the beauty of Content Store is that it does support a variety of, of uh, scanning devices, uh, kind of first starting with uh, document scanners that might be from Fujitsu, Canon, Panasonic, Kodak. Really all that's needed for a directly attached scanner is that it supports plane-based uh, scanning. And then it also uh, can work with other types of multifunction devices, 
or multifunction printers, as well as uh, multi uh, work group uh, type scanners. So really, pretty much any kind of device that you might use for scanning can be used with Content Store. There are over uh, essentially 100 uh, different file types that iOS Content Store supports. You know, most commonly used in enterprise content management and document management are TIFFs, PDFs, JPEGs, Microsoft Office documents, and so forth. Uh, we have definitely seen a, a trend uh, growing uh, for business and government agencies to be using rich media files such as MP4, WAV files. You know, these are audio and video files that uh, that are also part of uh, everyday content. Uh, one of the things that makes Content Store unique over other systems is that there is no special file conversion software uh, uh, required in order to to run or see or use these different uh, file types. Essentially, the browser uh, today uh, supports plugins from different vendors and different sources and so forth. They're just simply all integrated within, uh, within the application. So it makes it very, very fast and very, very efficient in order to uh, either retrieve a document or uh, see and view a, a video file in Content Store. Alex Content Store is also uh, built on Microsoft's latest uh, cutting edge technology. As I mentioned, it's a web based application uh, as, as well as its architecture. So, a key benefit for Alex Content Store is that uh, it makes it possible to have the functionality whether you're scanning, importing, indexing, retrieving, viewing documents, uh, updating or annotating them either within the office or outside of the office because of its web based architecture. It also means that system administrators can remotely uh, upgrade and manage the security uh, through a browser as well. We will also find uh, that different amount of content stores you get into some of the technical details is that uh, the system stores index data uh, and uh, the images and files right within uh, content stores uh, database, which is Microsoft SQL Server. This is very unlike other systems that oftentimes split those two things and make it, uh, make it the requirement to actually manage not only a database, but also a, uh, a document repository as well. This improves uh, security and uh, really minimizes the amount of administration that's required for the system. How many of you have ever deployed an application and found end users to, to uh, be slow to either adopt or uh, grumble about the lack of usability and how hard that the application is to use? You won't find that with iLinks Content Store. The user functions and so forth that that uh, exist within the application, uh, whether it's capture or store, storing and retrieving documents, uh, those types of things can be taught uh, and learned within 15 to 30 minutes tops. I mean, this literally translates into immediate productivity and less time and money spent on application rollout and uh, support. I'm going to cover uh, some uh, functionality of uh, iLinks Content Store using uh, some screenshots and so forth so that uh, you can see really kind of firsthand what does the user interface look like and I can describe to you some of the uh, uh, use uh, uh, applications and functions that are built within it. So iLinks Content Store, first of all, comes complete. And what I mean by that is uh, with a lot of systems out there, you have to buy some type of scanning component and then kind of marry that up or get some kind of uh, release script or integration to, to have that work with your content uh, document management system. That is not the case of iOS Content Store. Really, you just simply uh, file a document. Uh, there uh, exist uh, scanning uh, functions as well as electronic file uh, importing. Uh, this can also include even dragging and dropping digital documents uh, like a PDF or a Word document even photos and video clips right from your desktop or network folder and take those right into Content Store. We've even added a camera option to, uh, to the system. So this is, makes a great uh, add-on uh, functionality for employees that may, uh, might, may be using a tablet PC. For example, this could be used for property adjusters, building inspectors, social workers, law enforcement, really anyone kind of working out in the field where they need to capture uh, content and it might be uh, audio, video, or um, uh, yeah, pictures that they need to take. The 
after we've actually captured the documents and so forth, what's going to happen is that Content Store is going to create a, a batch, if you will. And so really the next step in order to get the documents into the system is to, is to uh, do some validation and so forth with that. Now, if you're scanning documents and so forth, what you may need to do is simply denote where the document breaks happen to be. And in order to make that happen real simply, uh, there are uh, keyboard user functions, um, hotkeys, if you will, and then there's also uh, the ability to, uh, to use the mouse. But you'll notice that we use thumbnails and a physical document representation to make that process very easy and very quick. Kind of moving on to the, on to the next step in the, in the process, um, we, we do something called indexing in enterprise content management. And so we're going to index and file a document. It's simple and straightforward. For those of you who aren't familiar with indexing, it simply means we're entering in keywords and data for searchability layer. Index fields can be tailored to your specific document requirements. So they're, it, with, with our system, it's not rigid. You simply just uh, create fields that relate to the documents. And uh, after you're done indexing a document, then you simply can hit the submit button and they are filed as a content store. Once you have indexed your documents and so forth and they're in content store, at some point in time, either you or your colleagues will have to search for those documents. And there's three easy ways to find documents in content store. The first and foremost, and this is really kind of a, a differentiator of content store unlike other systems, is that we have this global index field search. And this global index field search allows us to enter in things like a customer ID number or social security number or uh, a document type or uh, something of, of that nature uh, and then go find that document. Now the beauty of this is that whatever a user has access to in the system, it's only going to search in those areas of content store to bring up documents that are associated with that key index value. And we have found that most of our clients have avoided using what is the second way to search for documents, which is this advanced search where you can enter in different values and so forth, uh, uh, enter in date ranges and things of that nature, a number of criteria to kind of narrow down your search. Um, they simply found the global search a very fast and easy way to do it. But if you want to narrow your search and, and limit the number of choices that, that or, or uh, returns that come back, you can do that very easily. And then a third way to find documents, you know, how many of us have clicked on a, on a folder on our desktop or on a, on a network folder? Well, we have very much the same type of functionality in Island's content store to search for documents in that fashion as well. So it's easy to find documents, and we offer three ways to do it. Now, after we've found documents and so forth, we really kind of want to move on to being able to, you know, view the document or collaborate or use some of the other functions uh, in it. Uh, what what we're able to do with Content Store is is uh, I can uh, uh, then share this document with other with other people, and I can do that in a variety of ways. If I need to send this document, let's say, to someone outside the organization, um, I can actually email the document and package it up into a PDF and send it on its way. Or if I'm working with uh, working uh, between two different departments and I need to send a copy of an invoice over to someone, I don't need to create a PDF or really regenerate the document. I just simply might want to point them to exactly where that document exists. So you'll notice um, on the screen, kind of in the middle of the screenshot, there are a number of listed functions there. That is simply a one-click function. And again, that's a differentiator of Island's Content Store. And then I get this whole menu of different uh, ways that I can view, collaborate, communicate, and uh, analyze uh, information in Content Store. Kind of moving on to the, to, on to the next area of Content Store where uh, what I might want to do is dive into a little bit more of the viewing and revising and annotation features of Content Store. Um, again, with one-click functions using the right, right mouse button, you'll notice that um, just between the index fields and the images here, there is, again, a list of different functions that exist here. Now you'll notice on the on the on the document to the to the far right, there's a, a a black rectangle there. That's redaction. That comes standard with the Islands Content Store. With many systems, you would have to either license that uh, separately, or you would have to actually take the document outside that application into something like Adobe Acrobat. So these annotation functions and these enhancement features exist uh, standard uh, functionality with the content store. No additional costs, no additional licensing, 
and uh, again, very very easy to uh, access within the within the application. Another way that you uh, might uh, use Content Store, um, you know, kind of use this example, maybe in maybe in the county area of uh, of your government agency and so forth. Uh, there might be a need to review, uh, such as a packing slip and an invoice, and kind of compare quantities and information and so forth, and do some analysis uh, that way. Or uh, uh, there might be other other uh, situations where maybe a property adjuster and so forth uh, is uh, simply looking at uh, uh, comparing two different documents, maybe last year or this year's uh, property assessments and so forth, uh, as they deal with. Uh, maybe a property owner who is uh, looking for an adjustment on their property value and, uh, and uh, tax statement. Next, I want to kind of cover a few things that you can do with Content Store that uh, allow you to extend and enhance the capabilities of this uh, base system. And we have uh, three things I'm going to cover, iLinks Capture, iLinks Integrate, and iLinks Import. So in, in expanding the scope of Highlands Content Store, one of the things that um, some of our customers have a, a requirement for is the ability to, uh, to incorporate workflow. They might have something uh, as uh, simple as, a, as an accounting process that requires approvals, for example. And so um, within, within Content Store, as I mentioned earlier, we have built-in capability for, for capture. But as we take a look at what iLinks Capture has to offer. Now, this is a separate application that uh, adds um, functionality that does not exist with the built-in capture functions of Content Store, such as, in this example, Workflow. Now, you'll notice that Workflow, kind of underneath, and this is, this is an underneath view, can be actually very complex, but uh, kind of going back to the theme of Content Store, we keep it extremely simple when it comes from a, from a user aspect. The other thing that, that you might look at uh, in extending a content store with uh, in the capture part of it is optical character recognition and maybe some of the advanced forms recognition that uh, Kyle referred, referred to earlier. Um, so uh, those are, are, are aspects that you might want to consider if the capture uh, functionality needs to be extended uh, further. Kind of moving on to the next area of where we can extend and uh, and, and uh, add value um, with Content Store's Islands Integrate. This is an application integration, um, maybe more of a tool, but I think the uh, the uh, um, the item there on the on the right hand side of, of the uh, screenshot there is it provides search for documents in Islands Content Store right from within your business applications. How many of you have had to try to toggle between you know um, two different applications? Uh, in order to, to uh, look at, uh, you know, look at and, and revise or enter data, and then you have to look in, in another application elsewhere. Well, what this does is it provides basically a hotkey, so that you can get into either it's an accounting application, maybe it's a, a, a GIS a system, a global uh, information mapping kind of kind of system, and so forth, where you need to work between two applications. This basically provides a codeless way of uh, being able to do this and really simplifies and uh, saves a lot of time for end users uh, doing that kind of work. The last area that I want to touch on um, real, real briefly here about how to extend and uh, uh, iLinks Content Store is that you may have uh, reports that come off of, uh, off of either a, a mainframe system or, or an existing system that um, is simply electronic and so forth. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to really print that out and then scan it back in and index it and so forth. And that's where our import comes in, into play. This has the ability to bring in uh, uh, electronic streams that might be coming from, uh, for example, uh, a, a, a business application that produces, let's say, a, a check report run. Or um, in, in the case of uh, you might re be receiving uh, an electronic uh, file from a third-party source. For example, we've got a a, a criminal records uh, division that we're working with uh, with the city government, and uh, essentially what we're what we're seeing is that we can take that instead of them printing out that electronic screen and microfilming and so forth, in the process of getting them onto an electronic system, but also be able to take that electronic screen and bring it right into Content Store without any 
batch prep, scanning, paper handling, that kind of thing. It's going to save them a lot of money in the process. And then lastly, I just really kind of want to summarize, you know, what Islands Content Store brings to the table. It's, it's, it's a web-based application, so it's a thin client. You do not have to visit each desktop to install it. It's, it has, uh, I think that many of you might agree, if you've used these kind of systems, it has an easy-to-use uh, interface, easy on the eyes, rapid deployment uh, uh, methodology here in the fact that it's web-based, so uh, you can uh, roll this out literally to uh, hundreds of uh, users uh, very, very quickly. Users are trained in minutes. Cost of ownership is, 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 uh, is diminished over other legacy systems that require complex programming and a lot of project management and deployment uh, uh, time and expense. It supports a distributed environment, whether that distributed environment be right within uh, your office or if it extends out to branch offices or, or remote locations and so forth and uh, home users. We can extend the application through uh, integration capabilities that I mentioned earlier with Islands Integrate. We can streamline business processes through adding things like Islands Capture and using uh, and taking advantage of its uh, workflow uh, capabilities. It really provides a foundation uh, and a roadmap for the future. So really kind of with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Kyle. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening in. Thanks, John. That was a great overview. Uh, there, was, there was a lot of great information in that, folks, but uh, there are so many incredible things about this technology. It, it really would be impossible to fit it into a short time span such as this. Uh, I encourage you to give us a call if you're interested in finding out more, or since you have us here, go ahead and use the uh, chat function in the WebEx to submit a question. Um, I see some questions coming in already, so while we're rounding them up, uh, let me tell you a little bit about our company and what we do. So as you probably guessed, we're, we're very, very proud of the technologies we've manufactured, but we've also want to stress the fact that we are product agnostic when it comes to building solutions for organizations. Uh, we deliver solutions based on the needs of our customer partners, uh, not based on our relationships with Oracle, IBM, Microsoft, and the like. Uh, so who is ImageSource anyway? Well, we're independent integrators of ECM solutions headquartered out of Olympia, Washington. Uh, in a nutshell, we help both private and public organizations save time, money, and improve their services to customers or constituents. Uh, we solve business problems through the integration of cutting-edge ECM technology from a variety of vendors, enabling our customer partners to store, route, and retrieve critical content of all types very seamlessly. Uh, we also help organizations streamline operations by automating their manual processes, which results in significant cost savings throughout a company. Here's a sample of some of our customer partners. As you can see, we work with a large variety of organizations, both public and private, uh, from government to healthcare to manufacturing, uh, higher education, and more. Uh, I've highlighted some of the government organizations on the page to show you a small sample of the city, county, and state-level organizations we've worked with. Oh, and if you're interested in how we improve their business processes, be sure to take a look at our video case studies or paper case studies on our website. We've got tons of free information out there, and it's a great way to start looking at how you can save your own office a lot of time and money. All right, now that I've rounded up some of the questions here, let's, let's start addressing them. Um, I'll pass them off to, to Christina and Sean as we can. Uh, give me one moment here to get organized. Uh, let's see. We've got we've got a question coming in that says, currently I'm using an older Liberty system as my repository software. Is it better to keep the old files in this system and put new images into iLinks Content Store, or should I migrate all the information across to iLinks Content Store? Is this a difficult process? John, I think you can address that one. Sure, absolutely. In fact, we've worked with, uh, over the last uh, couple of years, we've worked with a number of companies and government agencies that uh, were using a, an existing system. And, you know, I think the, real, the really the key thing is, is that, uh, number one, uh, having a single repository uh, for your content and documents is, uh, is not only a best practice, but it is a way to reduce total cost of ownership when it comes to managing content and documents. And secondly, the migration process, uh, we, since ImageSource has done this, you know, numerous times with, with many systems, uh, not only do we, uh, we understand that process from start to finish, but we also have uh, tools and so forth that we have uh, built to, uh, to make that process efficient as well as uh, provide 
uh, you know, reporting and so forth so that we can come back to you and, and basically tell you exactly, you know, how many documents did we move over, were there any corrupt files, so on and so forth. So we really give you, uh, you know, a complete process uh, to get to, uh, to a common platform that's new and uh, has fresh, fresh features, but also all the data that may have come from your Liberty system. Okay, great. And moving on to the next question, we've got uh, what systems do you integrate with, and specifically, do you integrate with ESRI? John, I think you can take that one. Sure, absolutely. Uh, as I pointed out earlier, the iLynx Integrate uh, uh, application um, or tool, as, as, you, as you will, provides a, a number of ways for us to get to applications. And those can be web-based applications. They could be client-server architected applications. They could even be uh, typically the uh, kind of the legacy green screen kind of mainframe type applications. So really integrating with any kind of application with Islands Integrate is possible. The amount of additional coding or so forth you know, will depend upon, you know, what kind of feature functionality that you're looking for out of it, but we can minimize a lot of that with iLinks uh, integrate. And ERSI is something that, you know, would, would not be a challenge for us to work with. Okay, great. And another one coming in. If I am interested in meeting with someone to discuss our environment in more depth, whom do I contact? Uh, Christina, I'm going to pass that one off to you. Sure. Um, I would be happy to speak with any um, government organizations, city, state, county, any municipalities that would be interested in exploring um, iLinks content store in more detail. Um, and John can definitely assist from um, a technical side of things as well. We'd be happy to um, meet with anyone and discuss their current system and where they plan to go. And um, my email address is on the screen, so please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have further questions. Thanks, Christina. And in the interest of time, we'll do one more question here coming in. Uh, we've got, how are the software updates applied to iLinks Content Store, and what web browsers does it support? Sure, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer that question uh, as well, Kyle. Um, so kind of the, the first part of it is how are, how are updates applied to uh, iLinks Content Store? As, as I pointed out earlier, it's a web-based architecture, so the updates are applied on the server and then automatically uh, pushed out to the end users. If I happen to be a user and an update happened during the day, uh, that update would not be available until I logged out and logged back in. But basically, that uh, those updates and so forth make it real easy for a system administrator to keep the system updated and current, unlike other systems that uh, you know, that are hard to maintain and it's easy to fall behind on. I think the, the, the other part of the question, um, remind me again what that, what that was, Kyle? It looks like um, uh, what web browsers does uh, uh, iLinks Content Store support? Right, right. So the web browsers that iLinks Content Store uh, supports out of the box, Internet Explorer, um, yeah, it'd probably be best to be using what is you know most current. Uh, a lot of our users are either on Internet Explorer uh, seven, uh, seven or eight, um, and then we also support uh, Firefox, so uh, that as well. Um, it, it is possible to support uh, Chrome, but uh, it may take a little bit more work. But those are the browsers that we uh, so currently support with iLinks Content Store. Great, thanks, John, and thanks, Christina, for joining us. Um, and that's all the time we have today, so thank you so much for coming. I encourage you all to check out our website at www.imagesourceinc.com and go through our collateral. There are a lot of uh, videos, demos, and case studies surrounding iLinks Content Store and many other technologies to give you an idea of our services in the real world. And if you want to talk to somebody right now, give us a call right away. We've got people waiting to answer any questions you throw at us. And remember, these solutions have far-reaching applications that are impossible to cover in a one-hour webinar. So if you have a business process problem that you think could be improved, give us a call and let us hear about it. I'm sure you'll be very impressed. Uh, have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week, and we hope to see you again soon. Thanks for coming.